Eric Dernberger here with HuntersLink.com. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I build a set of arrows thinking about it from a hunting standpoint. So, what I start with is a dozen arrows. I've got 12 raw shafts of the Easton Full Metal Jackets. We need six broadheads, and I'm going to use the G5 Striker. And then we need a dozen of the Quick Fletch. So, I've got two packs of six here on the Quick Fletch. What I end up with is two sets of six hunting arrows. So each one of these broadheads is going to be labeled one through six and I'm going to marry those broadheads to two arrows. So I'll have each arrow labeled one through six and I'll have two sets of those. So two number ones, two number twos, and so on. And what I'm doing is I'm building these arrows from the broadhead back. So after I get them cut, after I get my arrows cut to the right length, after I get my inserts glued in, I'm going to take each one of those broadheads and again I'm going to spin test each arrow. I'm going to screw a broadhead into each arrow and I'm going to spin test it to make sure there's zero wobble or as little wobble as I can possibly get in these things. So once I marry each one of these broadheads together uh, to the two best fitting arrows, then with the broadheads on I'm going to install my quick fletch with the goal of lining each quick fletch up the same the same way as uh, my broadheads. I want it to look exactly the same as I got my arrow knocked and drawn on every arrow. So I line if, using the strikers a three blade broadhead I'll line up each fletching with each one of those blades. So it doesn't, uh, I don't know, studies have shown that it doesn't affect the flight whether or not the broadheads are uh, are lined up with the fletching but it's just the look that I want. I, I want it, everything exactly the same every broadhead lined up exactly the same way uh, when I've got my arrow knot. but taking the wobble out that is the most important thing and that's why we're starting with each arrow and working back to the fletching uh, to make sure that each arrow is as square as it possibly can with with a, a spin tested broadhead. So I'm going to go through the steps here um, that I take to, to make this happen. So again I'm going to start with uh, cutting these arrows down and uh, we'll just show you the steps as we go. So hang on and take a look. All right, so I've got all my arrows cut to size now. Uh, the next step is I'm going to use this uh, arrow squaring device by G5. And what it'll do is, if there's any burrs or anything uh, from this saw, this will uh, take them off. So it's got a diamond cut edge. Uh, with these full metal jackets, they're both aluminum and uh, carbon. So there's a couple different sides on this arrow squaring device, a diamond uh, diamond area for a diamond sanding area for the carbon and then it's also got a little sharper edge back here for the aluminum so we're going to use both sides um, on this and uh, this will get the arrows completely square and then it, it'll be time to glue in the inserts and uh, go from there so i'm going to get these squared away with my uh, arrow squaring device by g5 and uh, go from there One thing I almost forgot is to use this little sanding stone that uh, Easton sends with every one of its shafts. So basically what it does is, they call it chamfer, the, uh, the end of the shaft there. And basically what it does is it bevels the inside of this edge just a little bit for better point contact. So there's no gap between your arrow point and the arrow. So that's what I'm doing here. So the arrow squared away using that uh, squaring device and I'm just going to bevel the inside of that chamfer is what they call it. Well, I've got all my arrows cut down to size and squared away. The next step is an important one is to clean out the insides of these arrows. There's a lot of carbon dust in there so I'm going to take a q-tip and some rubbing alcohol and just clean those things out as best I can and uh, that'll help me get the best bond between the insert and the arrow itself. So 
We're going to get those cleaned out and then we'll uh, glue in the inserts. All right, so I've got my rubbing alcohol and my Q-tip. So I'm going to wet one side of the Q-tip and the, and the alcohol and just uh, insert it into the arrow and uh, get as much of that dust out as I can. You can see it's pretty dirty, so i just do that. And then I take the dry side to uh, finish it up there. So uh, that gets it good and, good and clean. All right, I've got my arrows cut, squared up, and cleaned up. Now it's time to uh, glue in the uh, inserts. So with the Easton Full Metal Jacket, you've got the hidden inserts. Uh, we're going to use the epoxy that came with the arrows. So uh, I'll get these glued in, and they'll have to sit overnight. Now we just take each insert, a little bit of glue on the tip, the bottom tip of that, and shove it in there. Wipe off any of the excess glue and shove it in with the tool. And we are good to go. I'm going to let that epoxy cure for about 24 hours and when we come back I'm going to marry up the broadheads with the arrows. Well, I'm back with you. It's the next day. I let the uh, epoxy for the inserts cure overnight. So uh, it's been about 24 hours so we're good to go there. So now it's time to uh, go ahead and get our broadheads married up with our arrows and then we'll put on the quick fletch after we do that. Um, so if I open these up, I'm just going to put them in the arrow and uh, try to match them up where we can uh, find the best match basically. Um, and I'm just going to spin test them. I also use these uh, broadhead adapter rings with these FMJs. It's just going to help uh, It'll help square the arrow up a little bit and uh, help with the alignment so it just kind of pops over the end there. And hopefully. Alright, we've got just a tiny bit of wobble and a lot of times these broadheads, you know, they may not match up perfect with one arrow, but you put them on the next arrow and it's it's absolutely perfect. And then this arrow may work with another broadhead, so I don't know. It just uh, works out that way sometimes, but that's why we're going through these steps to to find out which arrows are our best op, you know, match here. And that is perfect. So that's a perfect spin. So we know this one will be possibly our number one arrow. It is uh, absolutely perfect. A lot of guys, you'll see them put them on this uh, little arrow rolling devices, whatever you want to call those things. I've got one on my uh, on my saw here, my arrow saw. But you can sit and watch and you know watch that point to see if that there's no wobble that it's spinning perfectly, but I don't know, you can feel it pretty easily just by spinning it on your finger, so again, that one's is just perfect. Alright, so that's one arrow. And I'm just going to do that with all six of my broadheads, so when I get a match with all six broadheads, I go ahead and I'll number those, uh, each broadhead. So that's going to be my number one broadhead, because uh, we got a good match there, and uh, we'll start out with number two. And I'm just going to use this, first, this arrow that... Uh, didn't line up with that first broadhead and we'll see how it uh, lines up with this one almost perfect see so just going to another broadhead here it uh, it almost lines up perfect actually that's really good so there you go there's number two arrow perfect so I'm just going to do that with all six broadheads and then uh, once I find a match for all six I'll go ahead and label those and then I'll go through the second set of arrows. So I'm going to do that and then uh, we'll uh, take it to the next step. Okay I've got all my broadheads married up to their arrow so now it's time to just go put the quick fletches on, label them and we're good to go. Well I've got everything moved up to the kitchen. My arrows are still paired up in the 
ride order. So just waiting for this water to come to a boil here and uh, we'll install our quick fletch. So pretty go it goes pretty fast once we get going here. It literally takes longer for the water to start boiling than it does to, to fletch a dozen arrows. So that's the, the great thing about these quick fletch is you know, you, you're outside shooting and you, you shoot a, a vein off. If you've got an extra pack of these, just go boil a cup of water and you know, you'll be ready to go in just a few minutes. So, all right, we got the water boiling. So we're gonna go ahead and start fletching our arrows here. So I just take number one, put my quick fletch right on there and I just line it up right with the knock there and then make sure I've got it those in line looks pretty good and then just put them into the water here and they will cinch right down put it in there for about four or five seconds pull it out we got a fletched arrow and they're basically in line they're gonna be a little bit off when this stuff shrinks but for the most part they're in line and you're not gonna notice any difference um, when you got your arrow knocked and you're drawn. So there we go. We'll get the rest of them going here. And then I'll label my arrows. I'll put a little number on each fletching that designates the arrow. So we'll always know which broadhead is with which arrow. Very simple. Got it lined up there. Good to go. Just a few seconds, slide it in, I give it a few spins, and another fletched arrow. And it looks good. Perfect. Well, I've got the first set fletched, so now I'm just going to transfer the broadheads onto the other uh, arrow, its other mate, and uh, I'll get those fletched and labeled. And will be finished. Well I'm down to the final step in building my hunting arrows. Now it's just a matter of labeling them so I know which arrows go with which broadhead. And I just take a sharpie here and designate each arrow with a number. These are my two number one arrows with that broadhead. And how I keep my broadheads organized in the summer months when I'm just shooting field points, I keep my broadheads in this block of styrofoam. I got this at uh, Walmart, I think, in the craft section. But I just label them one through six and store my broadheads there. So in the fall come hunting season, I know which exactly which uh, broadhead goes with which two arrows. So it's a good system for my customers that uh, I either ship product to or my local customers. I'll go ahead and uh, just repackage their broadheads and I label them for them so again they'll know which broadhead goes with which two arrows so it's a pretty good system now uh, things to consider I like using G5 broadheads because I know they're high quality and they're spin tested not every broadhead is made the same so that's something to consider um, high quality arrows make things easier that's why I like to use Easton full Full Metal Jackets is the is the model that I use, but Easton Arrows in general. So uh, those are two things there. And then obviously the, the Quick Fletch from NAP just makes things very, very easy for anybody to fletch arrows. You don't need a bunch of expensive jigs and equipment to, to do this. You just need to boil some water and, and you're good to go. So if you'd like some more information on a set of custom hunting arrows, send me an email at Derek at HuntersLink.com or visit the HuntersLink.com web store. I'll have some options up there real soon. Don't forget to like us on Facebook at HuntersLink.com and The Break. Follow me on Twitter at AdHuntTheBreak and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, HuntersLink. You gotta spell out the dot, D-O-T, com. HuntersLink.com. We'll see you next time.